welcome to the Intern Whisper Live, the show all about internships and how to excel and do well. This is Isabella. And a reminder to our listeners, you can call us live on the air. The phone number is 407-582-2906. And you can also chat with us online through Intern Pursuits Facebook Live Chat. So coming up on this episode of the Intern Whisper Live, it's the end of the semester. Summer term is going to be starting. If you're looking for a summer internship, you can contact myself, Isabella, at Isabella at internpursuit.tech, or you can also sign up on our website, internpursuit.tech, and sign up for a student account or an employer account. You can also um, contact us by participating in the show with us live right now. You can write in some chats. Hopefully some people will be seeing us and they'll be uh, participating in there. And uh, you can lastly uh, send us uh, an email or call us at 407-582-2906. So how do people find us? You can look for us on Intern Pursuit on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. You can find Intern Pursuit the Game on Facebook and Twitter. And you can listen to us live on MixLR.com forward slash Valencia College Radio and follow the Intern Whisperer. And then watch us again live on Facebook, Intern Pursuit. You need to go like it, follow the page, and then you'll get notifications when we go live. Uh, You can, again, call us live on the air, 407-582-2906, and chat with us online on Intern Pursuit's Facebook live chat. So we're going to take a minute just to give a special shout-out to one of our patrons. It's RB Advisory. RB Advisory offers cybersecurity services to businesses worldwide. They are security specialists for cloud, computer, network, and compliance issues. RB Advisory addresses active threats to organizations, patching network vulnerabilities, and preventing future attacks to your business and information. Their website is rbadvisoryllc.com. Thank you, RB Advisory, for being a patron of the Interim Whisper. Um, And so now we have Interim Pursuit News, students that want to join our startup team and be an Interim Pursuit influencer or brand ambassador, go to internpursuit.tech forward slash careers to check out the job descriptions and apply to be a part of our superhero team. We're going to be onboarding in another two weeks, a week from this Saturday. And we're inviting employers of all types and sizes to be a part of our early adopter beta program. Early adopter employers will be accepted to participate, and you can do that by contacting me, Isabella, at internpursuit.tech for more information or go to our website. Now, our guest on the show today is Diana Jago. Am I saying your last yes. name right? Yeah, that's right. Uh, Jago. Jago. Yeah. Okay, and she is from Indonesia. So we're going to get to have some time to get to know her. Um, so, Diana, what was it like to go to college and university in Indonesia? Well, uh, it's pretty much the same here uh, in United States and in Indonesia, but the difference, uh, the differences are uh, the educational system, like here in the United States, in college they use online system. Like Canva. everything's online. Yeah, everything is online. Wow. Like, like Canvas, but in Indonesia, some universities they still do like manually, like on you, the ground. Yeah, on the ground. So if you have an assignment, you have to meet your professor, and then you have to um, do it manually. But here, you can also just email your professor, and you can communicate by email through email. So. It's like basically online is the the best way to get to know with you and your professor. So I feel it's like challenging, but it's different. So it's really interesting to me. Well, I think that that's going to be, um, yeah, that is interesting. And this is why, because I think that there's a perception uh, because we may think of Indonesia as, as a less advanced, you know, 
country that may not have as much technology. And so with the education being online, that's probably surprising to some of our listeners. Yeah. Because it sounds like does your internet it doesn't go out, it doesn't go down it stays on yeah uh, sometimes the internet is not the main problem but like the access to get the internet like so everybody has a computer yeah. and they can do their homework yes but not ev- like everybody has their own computer but like they they don't have internet access at maybe at their apartment or their um, home so yeah yeah. so it's difficult to yeah that's a challenge so where do students go then they are your are your colleges and universities are they like open 24 7 or do they stay open on weekends and late in the evenings is it like American college yeah they open like five days a week so from Monday to Friday And sometimes on Saturday, they still open, but only for the library. So people go to the library for books still? Yeah. Okay. But they also do research online. Yeah, Yeah, sure. And also the difference is about the the time, the period. Like here, you can have uh, three months uh, for one semester. But in Indonesia, we uh, we have like six months per semester. That is pretty interesting. Yeah. So so I'm going to still, I find this very, very interesting, and I'm sure I'm not the only listener that may or the only person that may think this way. If there is accessibility to technology and it's easy enough to be able to have a computer, but it's finding a place where there's Wi-Fi or yeah. uh, some type of Internet connection, um, that's one issue. But... For me, I thought that Indonesia was way more rural and perhaps considered more of a third world country. Yes. So if it is that, then education is very important in your yeah, country, sure. right? Yeah. So for me, um, I'm from Timika, Papua, which is the eastern part of Indonesia, and it's kind of rural area. So I went to school in Yogyakarta. It's in Java. Uh, it's like uh, like from Orlando to California, something like Wait, that. Wait, is so, that Jaffa? Is that in Jaffa? Jaffa, like uh, either, um, is that in Central Indonesia? Jaffa, it's Indonesia. Okay. So Indonesia is like have seventeen thousand islands. So I'm from Papua, which is the eastern part of Indonesia. Seventeen thousand islands. islands. Yes. Holy cow. Yeah. <laughs> All right. This is like geography for, and for our listeners. And I'm going to have to tell you that I'm geographically challenged. I have no problem admitting that. So I get to travel vicariously through all of the international students that I'm privileged to work with. Um, I had no idea that there was – I just thought Indonesia was like one one place, but one 17. Island. Yeah. It's uh, – when you see on the map, it's like small – but when you go direct there, it's like separate by island, island by mm. island. So, yeah. So I think it's similar to how we have the keys, nowhere near the same. I think there's five, seven keys. Again, for our listeners, I am not the geography buff. However, there's places that we can hop from island to island yeah. or key to key, and it's similar, I think, in concept. Just so I'm trying to wrap my head around it still. Yes. Yeah, that's interesting. Um all right. So with that, what's the biggest biggest island in in, in Indonesia? Um, it's Jaffa. Jaffa. Yeah. Okay. How many do you know roughly? How many people are in that country or island? Oh. I I don't know what it would it be. A, There's a lot of people, but uh, I mean, I don't know the exact number of people. How do I spell it? I'll look it up while we're talking. Indonesia. I know how to spell yeah, that one. Yeah. Uh, but and Jaffa, J A F E. Yeah. Okay. So I don't think I spelled it right. It's coming up Jade. J A. Uh huh. F E. Yeah. Yeah, that's not popping up for me. So V V. Sorry, V. V is in yeah. Victor. Yeah, Victor. Um. Okay, I don't think I still have Java. J A V A. Yeah. Okay, I thought you said E. 
Okay, just a minute. Now I think I'm closer to it. It says it's lying between Sumatra, Sum, Sumatra, yeah, Sumatra. Yeah. and Bali, a volcano-dotted island that's at the geographic and economic center of Indonesia and home to more than half of its people. It's the largest city. It's modern. It's sprawling. And it's the nation's capital. And it says, just so you know, 141 million. Yeah. 141 in, two, in 2012. It's, yeah, it's in 2012. So that's a fun fact there. All right. So it's bigger than what people yeah. think. That's for so, sure. So uh, I was like, I'm from Papua. I went to school in Central Java uh, mm -hmm. in Yogyakarta City. So I was studying in Sanata Dharma University. Wow. Yeah, there. In Jakarta. Uh-oh, I just uh, moved my, my notes around here, so give me a minute. Um, what did you go to school for? What was your degree? Oh, I was, um, um, I do Indonesian literature. You did what? Indonesian literature. Literature? Yeah. So it's like history, or is it? It's like, it's basically like poetry. Okay, literature, like truly, literature. truly literature. Um, that's an interesting Interesting choice also there. So how did you end up at Valencia College? So after I graduated from uh, Sanata Dharma University in 2015, I went back home in Papua and I, I worked for two years. Then I found a scholarship from Aminef and I found a community college initiative program. It's like program, but the program is fully founded by U.S. Department. So my boss at office, um, he give, uh, like he sent me an email and he said that, uh, would you like to try, uh, apply this program? And if you can make it, you can go and study there in, in, in the United so States. So you got your blessing from your, certainly your employer, but yeah. um, how did your family feel about this? They, like, I didn't expect to come here, too. So when when I first tell my family, they feel like oh, it's awesome because, like, I'm the first one, like, in, in my generation, in my family, I'm the first one to go abroad. And, wow. And it's America. It's like uh, I do have a dream to study abroad, but I, I've never, like, thought that it's going to be here in Orlando. So I just applied, and um, I, I have no idea what's next. I just applied, just like that. Yeah. And then uh, after two months... Kind of like Christmas, yeah. you're going, I don't know yeah. what's going to happen, but maybe yeah. something. <laughs> and after, uh, after New Year, like January 4th, I got an email, and then... Uh, you are selected to this program, and then you will have an interview and two full tests for the next step. And then I was like, wow. wow. Really, like, yeah, I can't believe it. It's because, like, from Indonesia, the, there were um, 500 applicants. Wow. Yeah. And I know the other person, Helmi, he's going to yeah. be on our show in uh, another week. Um, so we'll get to hear from him, too. Yes. Did you guys know each other when you... No. We are from the same island, Papua, but different city. So mm. he's from Sorong and I'm from Timika. So I don't know him and uh, he doesn't he didn't know, know you. He, he Was didn't that, know. Are there any other Indonesian students that are in this program with you? Yeah. In Orlando, we are four. One from Lombok. His name is Tigu. One from uh, East Java, uh, Nurhayati. But none of you knew each other. No. So that's really nice. You share yeah. a common a commonality here, that you all got to come and be a part of this program. That pretty much yeah. should make you like friends yeah. for a long time. Yes. So actually, for the first, we didn't choose Valencia College, and like we don't have any idea. We just know that we will go to, to the United States. Oh, so you had no idea yeah. it was Valencia. Yeah. So we follow every step, like medical checkup and everything, and then they send our document to the United States, and then from here, from 
um, U.S. Department, they, they just um, place us. So from Indonesia, we are 30, 30 people from this, for, for this year. Right, wow. So four in Orlando and one is in other uh, states in, in mm. the United States. I really hope you all get to stay friends because I know we're going to have Benjamin on the show and Sarah and hopefully Aziz will come on too. And Aziz is from Tunisia, Tunisia. Sarah's Colombia, and then um, Benjamin is Cape Town, Africa. And just being able to hear uh, what it's like to go to school in your country and what it's like and how it's so different here is the on-the-ground classes that you all have in, in Indonesia. Is that similar to what you've done here in, in the United States? Uh, I can say that it's similar but a little bit different because... Are there more students yeah. in the classroom or less? Yeah, or? more students in the classroom. And sometimes the professor, they didn't really interact with students. Mm. But here, the professors are really care about the student. And then they really know the students. So it's a good point for me. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I would agree. I know that Valencia has a policy of keeping their class size. I believe it's at 24 and less yeah. students yeah. in a classroom. So um, that way there's more opportunity to be able to know the students and really, you yeah. know, get to and know everybody in the classroom. Yeah. Though. And then to, to be able to get, uh, get engaged in the, in the class and then communicate with people, with the professor and with friends, with Americans' friends. So you mentioned that um, it was Indonesian literature that you study. Yes. Uh, what is, and this one I did not prepare you for, but um, is there a particular poet, since you said poetry, I'm going to pr make a presumption that's what you really like a lot. Is there a particular poet there that you would say is just outstanding, your favorite? In Indonesia? N in Indonesia that you studied. Oh, yeah. Um, I like many um i don't know how to say it. poets poets yeah mm -hmm. but one of that uh, like my favorite one is the title is aku ingin uh, which means um i wish or i want oh, okay so yeah in indonesia aku ingin uh the title is i want I want to love you simply, in words not spoken, tender to the flame which transform it to ash. I want to love you simply, in signs not expressed, clouds to the rain which make them offense. That sounds like it's really short. It's meant to be like, what, like a haiku almost? Yeah. Something similar to that? Very pretty. So you like romance? Yes. <laughs> okay. So I've got that part. Um, the uh, Let's see. So did you like the literature that you had here, also the uh, American literature or the poetry that we had here? Yeah, I, I do love, I still love uh, literature in, I mean, in English. But for now, I'm not studying literature. I'm doing, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, human resources specialist, which is very different. Very different. Yeah. Very different. And so do you get a certificate at the end of this program? Because it's a year long. It's not like a typical degree. Yes. And what is your uh, certificate? What does it state? Like, do you have to take courses for this? How does that all work? So... For community college initiative program, they gave us uh, opportunity to study in the United States for in the United States for two semester, fall and spring, and then we will uh, receive the certificate. Uh, it depends on our major. So my major is human resources specialist. Okay, and so you came in and you were working with me on Pivot and Intern Pursuit, both things, um, and you were also had a focus on that. And now I know we didn't get to do as much as we originally had thought. Uh, what are the three biggest things that you 
they don't have to be HR related. What are the three biggest takeaways from your internship that you believe you'll be able to carry forward going back home? So, yeah, this is really awesome experience for me. My internship with Pivot Business Consulting was really awesome. Like, I can learn a lot from, from you, my supervisor, and I can be able to to do um, marketing, also onboarding process on HR, mm-hmm. which is... Um, I've never done it before. So one of the things that you had to learn, you and uh, Benjamin both had, because he has a focus on HR too, is to really understand what the HR documents are yes. and why it's important yeah. to have people sign those. Like the confidentiality. Something. Yeah, confidentiality agreements and then also a work for hire. We talked about that one. Um, so aside from the fact that you, you were able to, to have some of the HR stuff, uh, skills reinforced. Um, Some of the things that we focused on was creating some videos. And I know we have like two, maybe three more weeks still left. And it's to get your videos completed. Benjamin and I worked on his video. Uh, It was specifically targeting an employer. And then he also had one for a student. So we're wrapping those up. And then, of course, I'm going to see yours that you have. Um, Those would be videos hopefully, that they are going to be something that um, would go viral. So I hope that everybody does a really good job on them. Um, The second thing that you got out of your internship, what do you think was the second skill that's really, really important? I can be able to study or learn more about math or percentage. And it's, it's very important. Like, I've never think about it before. And then when you uh, show me about the the application. Oh, yeah. yeah. We used, okay, so a little shout out here. It's um, Elevate was yeah, Elevate. an app, and it's all about helping to reinforce math and language and listening skills and all types of um, different skills for people. It's a really great app. Yeah. But why was math important? Why is it, how is that tied to HR? Do you remember? Oh. Yeah, because like when we want to have our own small business or business for our own uh, for ourselves, we need to know our numbers. That's mm-hmm. so it's it's really important. So for me, because you have to create budgets, right? Yeah. You have to know how much something costs, but you also need to know how you're going to make money, and then you have to know what's the margin and yeah, all of true. those good term terminology that comes into play. Yeah. Like, I've never thought that was important until, like, I, I just realized when I do internship with you. So right. thank you so much. And I really enjoy the application. It's like a game, but, like, makes me think whenever I start to do it. So the other part of why math was, a, uh, was critical to know is if you're talking with your sales team and you're wanting to or recruit somebody that's in sales, you needed to be able to assess if they really had a good understanding of math, and it might be, okay, what's 15% of a 1,000? You know, if you were to quiz them, you need to be able to do that also. Uh, But it's not just it ties to commissions. It ties to the budget. It also ties to the sales, and it helps you determine if you're going to be able to hire anybody else. That's why it matters to us in HR. We really had to know uh, how to understand a, uh, a balance sheet and also um, profit and loss. Those are all very, very important reports, financial reports, to be able to to have conversations with your accounting, with just your accounting and your finance and sales people. Yeah. So third thing. What's well, yeah. the third thing? Uh, one more thing. It's uh, social media marketing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now this is crazy for our listeners. This this young woman has 10,000 followers on Instagram. And I went, how did you do that? <laughs> so she's posting really good pictures because she's had a lot of fun in her uh, program here at Valencia College. But she also um, has huge followers. So now you're going to go and use what you... Uh, some of the courses I've recommended through like HubSpot, HubSpot. and other uh, 
co-schedule and Hootsuite. They all have different different certificates that you can earn that yeah. will be valuable on your resume and they will very much help you yeah, to be able to free. harness the power of social that's true and it's for free yeah, yeah. well yes it is for free the knowledge is is definitely there for free um their hope is that obviously yeah. that they're going to convert people into yeah, users i'm so glad that like uh i do internship with you because I get to know all the information. It's all from you. So, oh well, really. believe me, it's something that's collective. Thank you for that. Yeah, thank um, you so it's, much. It's certainly information that other business owners, because I work in a consulting firm, all of my clients will have different programs and platforms and applications that they use. So that means I have to learn them. So I learn a lot of them that way, just because I'm working with different sizes and types of clients. The second thing is is that students come in and they'll tell me about some of the programs that they use, and I find that interesting. And then third is just by being in the environmental space uh, down at Starter Studio. There's all types of different people that use uh, different – primarily it's a tech accelerator, but there's a lot of companies down there that use – different programs. And then lastly, just research. The more yeah. you research things, the more you're going to find information and That's be able to do it. But the reason why marketing is important in yeah. HR, we've got to connect the dots for our listeners yeah. now, is the fact that this is how in HR we go and we look up to see, is this somebody that should be representing our company? Yes. What are they putting on their social their feeds? Social. Yeah. So I, I, now I, I feel like uh, social. Uh, I look for my social media in different way. Like, ah, you're yeah. looking at it from yeah. business now. Yeah, like the previous way, I do like I post everything that I want to post. But for now, like when I want to post something, I think about the impact after I post the. That's yeah. good. Yeah, that's good. I'm so glad to hear that. Yeah, it's make me realize that what uh, people going to say after I post this. So mm-hmm. it's really important for me too because uh, sometimes like we are really happy and we are going crazy post about everything. But when we want to uh, get opportunity to find a, a good job, we didn't uh, realize that they will do the onboarding process, which is... Uh, People, Background, employers yeah. do research on you all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When we're looking at, gee, is this somebody I want to have working yeah. in my company? You know, what are they putting out there? Because if it's somebody that's got a controversial yes. type of um, personality and they're putting things out there that could be like bad words or I don't know, just it just depends. Or if they're putting their their personal life out there, then it makes people think twice, like, well, I don't know. This may not be somebody I want to have representing my company. Yeah. Because they could go and put some grievance out there also instead of coming to the person and saying, hey, I have a problem. For example, if you had a disagreement with your boyfriend, should you go put it out there on the Internet for everybody to read or should you go talk to that person? It's the same thing in the workplace. Yeah, so like, for example... If you have a good interview and then your resume is really perfect, but then when they do your background check and then they find something like weird on your social media, you will lost the opportunity to get the job. Oh, yeah, because you might be thinking of what I asked you. When you and I had (laughs) interviewed and I had said, uh, is everything okay because yeah. you put something on here and I'm going, I don't know why you did that. And you went, oh, that was from a different thing, different interview. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So that might have been like, uh-oh, now I need to think about this yes. entirely from a business side. We should always be thinking that way, honestly, don't you yeah. think? Yeah, sure. I think that everybody should really consider, um, is this something I should put out there? Is it really going to help? more people or is it going to harm yeah you know and everybody could say that you know everything can harm people but there's this place where does it serve what's the purpose for doing it i think anyway so diana has just for our listeners ten thousand followers and she has a goal that she wants to do a, a big dream she wants to accomplish in her country why don't you tell us about your dream because it's part of why you went to school here yeah so I have my own library called Jago Library. 
I started the library in February 2018, but now it's not like really running because I'm here. So after I return, after this program and I return home, I will continue to focus on my library. The library um, located in Timika, Papua, and it's not like it's not only library like general library but i will be focusing on helping children to follow their dreams so i will uh, support them like i will give them uh, i will encourage them to to be able to to find what they really want to do in their future Mm. Yeah. yeah, I know that you and I have talked about that. And being able to understand how to harness the power of what you have um, have accomplished with all of these followers, you could use that to help um, fund that opportunity um, so that you can buy more books, you can hire yeah. staff, you, know, you understand how sure. all of this can tie together even on a business too. So that's, that's I think, a, a really cool outcome that – can occur for you okay so i have to take just a minute to do another um, patron announcement so give me just a second so since simplicity solutions group they specialize in web design development hybrid mobile and custom web apps built on proprietary application framework they help businesses thrive in the digital age from web design to records management software their website is simplicitysolutiongroup.com Thank you, Simplicity Solutions, for being a patron of the Intern Whisper Live. All right, so we're back here with Diana. Um, Diana, what advice would you give another student seeking an internship? Okay, um, first, if you are seeking for an internship, you have to be brave to communicate through email. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So in my experience, uh, I didn't know you before. Mm-hmm. I just I just get an information from my friend. Wasn't it somebody from the school though? Yes. Yeah. Who was your Who's your advisor at your school? My. Uh, no, 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 not from my advisor, but from my friend. Oh, okay. Yeah. I thought it was also, well, the one of the, whoever it is that's the person, I think it's Isabel. I think that's her name. Uh, there's somebody over in charge of your program that um, has connected me with the students. So I think you guys kind of talked among, among yourself also is what you're saying. Yeah, and then I just... I don't I don't ha- I have no idea but I need this internship I need the experience so I just be brave at the time and send you an email and asking you for internship so for for students that looking for an internship first one you have to be brave to communicate oh yes yeah. I agree with that yeah and then for doing internship with uh, intern pursuit or pivot business consulting, you have to visit the website to have more information about that. Yeah, you absolutely yeah. should always do. You as the student that yeah. wants to do an internship with anybody should definitely look at the website, yes. look at the social feeds, really um, look at the people on LinkedIn that you, so you can better understand who might you be working with. You need to do your own intel, so yes. to speak. So it's like being a bit of a spy yeah sure and you have to prepare your good resume yeah you so. should really have a good resume a good template for sure yep and that was one of the things that we were working on over the weekend is um finalizing the skills that you get to put on your resume uh along with the um getting all of the paperwork completed. There's a lot in any projects that you guys are working on. They all have to be wrapped up here within two weeks. We're going to say two weeks for sure. Okay. And then the last one is um, you have to be open-minded for doing the internship so you can get more opportunity. Mm. So if you maybe at school you're doing uh, HR, 
but you have to be open minded when whenever you are in the workplace so you can be able to work uh, also for the marketing or whenever your supervisor asks you to do so you know that's a good <laughs> you raise a really good point here because again in hr um we hire for people in all different departments. So it's really important to be able to be um, having good communication skills to understand how the personality is different. For example, in a, an accounting or bookkeeping, they're more of an introverted personality. They process inside of their head. I know I've talked about this before in other shows. But there's also this place where, um, like, People that are programmers, again, they process in a different way. And if you get with somebody that's in marketing, that's a high energy, they get their energy also from people. It's one of those things that you have to know how to speak like multiple languages. Yeah. Um, it's not just languages that are different based on countries, but then it's a, or regions. It's also being able to understand the jargon that's mm -hmm. specific to each each position or each department and understand what their needs are. So I yeah. think that you raise a valid point there. Yeah. It's very much, I think, like being a translator. Yes. Mm hmm All right. So um, good points. Thank you. Thank you for bringing those up. Uh, let's go and talk about leaders, people that have m mentors, leaders, anybody that has inspired you. You get to name up to three. So just realize it can be people that are living, dead, anybody. Okay. The first one is my grandmother. What's her name? Her name is Ludivina Wayubiuta. Very pretty name. Yeah. Is she still living? No. Okay. She is passed away. All right. So why? Why did you pick her? Because i really close to her. Mm -hmm. And then... See, like, she's really inspiring me to to be able to catch my dream. Mm. Like, she, was she a writer also by any chance? I'm wondering. She's a teacher. Oh, okay. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, she's math teacher, but I'm not good at math. <laughs> no, no, you will be better at math. Yeah. You have to change your thinking. I will yeah. be good at math. Yeah. Yeah, I will be good at math. Mm -hmm. And like, she always say that don't be afraid um, dream what you really want and try like make an effort to to be able to reach your dream mm, make a plan yeah, yeah make a plan so that's really nice like um it's kind of um, old style but i i used to write down everything on my notebook so like i have a lot of notebooks and I put everything there. Uh, and also it's because of her. She told me that um, if you put your feelings into uh, write or on your book, you will feel something different and you will feel happy. And for me, it's true. Oh, that's sweet. Yeah. Yeah, that's really nice. Is she your grandmother on your mom's side or your dad's side? From my mom's side. Yeah. Okay. Who's your second person then? My second person is my friend. Her name is Claire. Uh, she's American. She's from um, California. Oh, is yeah. she in this program also? No. Actually, she used to work in Papua for two years, and then I met her in 2016. And so she was an exchange student over there in, in your country? Um, no exchange student, but she was doing her research for her dissertation. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah, she was there and worked there, and then, like, she couldn't find someone to talk. And then, like, because when you are a stranger in, in a country, you feel like you're really alone. And when I met her... We have like some uh, like many things in common. So mm -hmm. yeah, we are connect like connect each other. Mm -hmm. But we have like distance like twenty years. Like I'm twenty six, maybe she's forty something. Oh okay. Yeah. But we are really like best friend. Yeah. And then uh, she is also my inspiration. 
Like she gave me information about scholarship in in the United States and everywhere. She sent me many websites to find scholarship. And also about this one, she she mentioned it before. And then yeah, like I f- I feel like after I met her, I feel there's another hope. Mhm. Yeah. So when I'm here in the United States, she asked me to visit her in California, so I went there for Thanksgiving. Oh, nice. Yeah. And then she also came here like um last week. She visited me beca- before I went back home. Uh, before I yeah, before I going back home. Okay. Um yeah, how long is the flight back to Indonesia from from Florida? From Florida, we have to fly to Dallas and then Dallas to Hong Kong and Hong Kong to Indonesia. So that for That sounds the, like 18 yeah, hours. For it's more than It's like 2 days. Yeah. Uh, so we will be flying uh from Orlando at 8 a.m. Yes. And then we will be in Indonesia the next day, 11 p.m. Okay, then that's not, yeah, that's not two days. That's not 48 yeah. hours. It's yeah, like it's, 24, it, somewhere yeah, in there. Yeah, it's like 26 hours in total. Yeah. Wow, that's a long time. Yeah. A long time. Um, I get, is that counting like layover layovers? Do you have to do that? Or yeah. is it like almost get on one plane? Yeah, it's not, but for me, I have to from from Orlando to Jakarta. It's the capital of Indonesia. I have to have another flight to Papua. Oh wow! Yeah, a so, smaller one. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So, so the, someday, I hope I get to go to your country. Yes. Yeah. I'll be waiting for you. Okay. The last person that inspiring me, it's you. Oh. So I I really put your name here. <laughs> Thank you. Isabella That's very Jensen. Cool. Okay, why? Yeah, because I feel like be an independent woman is really important. Yes, and I would agree. Yeah. Be able to um, run a company, you have to be s- smart, but you also have yeah. to be smart enough to keep other people around you that help, yeah. you know, make sure that things get done. I could not do anything without the people that are are with me case in point running this show i think i'm doing pretty good at this point but i have to figure out why i couldn't get my music to play so nonetheless we can't do anything without anyone else around us we always need people with us and just so you know there's a couple people that are uh watching the show one of them is victor so i'm going to say hi to victor he was uh on the software team like three we're going like two years ago two and a half years ago and he's awesome He is um, a programmer, and he is somebody that I respect greatly. And then also Sumia. Sumia worked with me also, and Mm -hmm. she is incredible too. So I think that a really smart young woman that, you know, these are people that I'm fortunate to have met and have brought real value to, um, to my life. But it's always nice to hear that I've done that for somebody else. So thank you. Thank you. Okay, well, um, what are the top three places we should go see in Indonesia and why? In Indonesia, <coughs> you have to go to Bali because okay. everybody, like everyone from around the world, they know Indonesia because of Bali. Okay, yeah. so that's a tourist place. <laughs> yeah, tourist place. <coughs> it's the best place to visit, to to do any, everything because they have like a uh, mountain side and then beach side, so... Yeah, you can, you can really enjoy and relax, and it's really cheap in Indonesia mm-hmm. because, like, you can find food less than one dollar. Okay, so, so what's yeah. the? Oh, well, oh, yeah. I'm kind of jumping in, but sorry, the second we're, place. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna weave <laughs> these things together, though. So, what's the really good food to eat while we're in there? And you can just merge those questions I, together. Yeah. I can say that fried rice, spicy fried rice. Yeah. Yeah. That's the best food in Indonesia. And also chicken satay. Oh, yes. Yeah. That's super yummy. Yeah, yeah. With the peanut sauce. Mm, that yeah. sounds really good. Is, 
Okay, I was watching a YouTube video, or no, it was a Facebook video, and it had um, really unusual fruit uh, from all around the world. And one of them was um, a fruit that it, when you open it up, it has like a custard inside of it. What are the fruits that you have in your country? Oh, durian. We have durian. Yes. Yeah. Now that one's supposed yeah. to be a real smelly fruit, yeah, right? Yeah, smelly, but it's really delicious. <laughs> I really like it. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, it's so it's, weird. Yeah, uh, it's very prickly the, on yeah, the outside. On the outside. But when you open it, it's, it smells really good for people like. It's really good, but for people doesn't like is it. it. <laughs> is it like mango? No. The no. taste, it's really different, but... If you eat a lot, you can feel a little bit dizzy. Oh, okay. So, yeah. You can eat a lot, but not that much. Okay. Yeah. So don't overindulge yeah, don't too over, much. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Second place. Yeah. It's Second cool to place see. is, of course, Papua, my place. All right. So <laughs> yeah. everybody has to come and see you. Yeah. Because uh, Papua ha- also have beautiful places like Raja Ampat. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's... it's really popular and many tourists visit Papua and they go to Raja Ampat. You're saying things that are really hard to say. So what is the language that we would have oh, to learn? So You were colonized by the Dutch, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay, so it doesn't sound like Dutch. No, not mm-hmm. at all. So in, in Indonesia, we have um, our language called Bahasa. So it's like national language for every part, every island. But in every island, we also have our own language. Languages. So mm-hmm. it's more than 300 languages wow. in Papua. But for all the Indonesian, it's more than 700 uh, languages. Wow. So, so it's, but it's local languages. So the national language called Bahasa. Mm. So we are all, in school, we are all use Bahasa. Okay. Yeah. So that's the language that pulls your whole country together. Yeah. That most people can speak that. So do you speak like two or three languages if you're in your country? Um, yeah, I speak, I can speak Japanese. Japanese? Java, yeah, Japanese. Because okay. I used to live in Java for high school and uh, university. Okay. So I can speak really fluent in Java language and Indonesia and English. And um, I can speak uh, Camoro language, but not really fluent. So Camoro is it's a tribe in Papua. That's uh, where my grandma came from. Oh, very nice. Yeah. So the um, what other foods should we eat other than the fried rice and the chicken satay? Chicken satay. Mm, I think uh, basically it's all spicy food. Like it's spicy like, with yeah, yeah like, like chicken s- soup. Oh. but spicy and then uh, noodles, fried noodles. Not spicy like hot, but just like cinnamon and maybe nutmeg or yeah, but. Like our level of spicy, it's maybe different. Like here, when people say it's spicy, it's not at all for us. Yeah. 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 So, and noodles, fried noodles. I love fried noodles. Yeah. Oh, so you have to try Indomie. Maybe I will bring some to you. Are you? Later. Uh, you know, on the the last event that you guys have, is it going to be international? So it's like food from all of your countries. Like potluck? Yes. Yeah. Okay, that'll be awesome. So yeah. then if you, are you going to bring noodles? Yeah, I, I will bring noodles. Okay, so then I'll get to try your noodles yeah. then. Yeah. At the end of the uh, course, just so our listeners know what we're talking about, uh, their program has uh, an event where any of the students, they get to invite either people that they've been working with or just somebody that they'd like to invite. And we all come together and we get to see it's a celebration of them. Also, the things that they've um, acquired, any certificates, any degrees uh, during the time. Well, maybe not degrees, but certificates definitely and acknowledge their friendships. So it's super nice. All right. So we did the three. Uh, No, the the third one is uh, Yogyakarta. 
Okay, really hard to say. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's a really quiet place, and they call it like the city of study, uh, okay. the, the city, the city of students, because they have many universities and schools, and it's really good quality. So many people from all around Indonesia they came to Yogyakarta for study. Mm. They have good universities in. Well, I'm looking forward to being able to visit there. All right. Well, I think we've covered all of our questions, and it's just, it's actually time to be wrapping up our show. So it's timed perfectly, as always, here. And I want to be able to um, give a special shout out to Valencia College East Campus for letting us be in the broadcasting studio. Thank you so much. It's always a privilege to be here on the campus. It's great atmosphere. Thank you to Q. He's the station manager. We love you. I did this today without having to go and come and ask for his help. Um, I also want to give a shout out. So, Diana, who do you want to give a shout out to? You can give to your family at home. You can give it to your teachers, any of your friends in the program. Acknowledge whomever it is you wish. I don't know. Okay, don't so know. I'm going to give my shout-out. <laughs> okay. My shout-out goes always to the listeners. Thank you for listening to our show. Secondly, it goes to the people that I get, I'm privileged to work with, and that includes you and then also the rest of the international students, but so many. Yes. Um, special shout-out to Katrina. She does the social media here where it's taking the pictures and then the posts, the shows, and putting it out there in the social feed. Um, and then to the game team, and then also to um, John and Dennis. They are actually, John is the junior developer, Dennis is the uh, intern, and then um, I said John. Joe is the junior developer, John is the senior developer, and Dennis is the intern that's been working on the Intern Pursuit platform. So we are now ready to be able to test it out and make okay. sure that we're matching students to employers. So. We're moving into the beta now, but a special shout out to them. Yeah. So anybody okay. that you want to? Oh, maybe for all of my CCI friends. Um, there you go. Yeah, in Virginia, in Iowa, in Arizona, in Texas, and where in Boston and everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. around yeah. the state. Yep, definitely. And I also want to make sure that listeners know how to find us. So you can find us. Um, on you can contact us at info at internpursuit dot tech three two one four two 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 one six six is our number, and you can listen to us on Facebook. You can look at us on Twitter, LinkedIn. Um, I forgot one. YouTube and yeah, I think that's it. Uh, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and YouTube. And you can listen to us live on mixlr.com forward slash Valencia College Radio. Follow the Intern Whisper. And again, thank you for watching us live on Facebook. And as we close the show, we want to thank you, our listeners. Mm -hmm.